Maneam Shigura Shiata Parakamalam Shigurun Vaishnavam Sya Shirupam Sagrajatam Saganaraganatam Bitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Paran Sahagana Lalita Shivishikam Vitam Sya Oma Jnana Timaranda Sya Yanajana Shilakya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Gurva Bistam Supurakam Gurganara Si Shasambhu Shitam Chintya Chintya Samasta Veda Nepunam Shri Rupa Patanugam Govinda Abhidam Ujjvalam Varatanum Bhaktyan Vidam Sundaram Mande Vishwagurun Shah Divyat Bhagavat Prem Noe Bijapradam Devam Divyat Tanum Suchandavaranam Balarka Shailan Shitam Sandrananda Puram Sadeka Varanam Vairagya Vidyam Budim Shri Siddhanta Nidim Subhakti Lasitam Sarasatanam Varam Bande Tam Shubaram Mareka Sharanam Nyashi Swarashi Dharam Mansha Kalpata Rubyas Cha Kripa Sindhu Bhyeva Cha Patita Nam Paveni Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namo Nama Namo Mahamaranyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gorata Vishe Nama so we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, The Hidden Treasure, The Sweet Absolute, with translation and commentary by Srila Bhakti Rakak Sridhar Dev Gosai Maharaj. And we're in chapter uh, 9, Rajaguya Yoga. Rajaguya Yoga, The Hidden Treasure of Devotion. And we're starting with verse number... 29. Samoham sarvabhute shu na me dvesho sti na priya na bhajanti tu mam bhaktya mayi te te shu chapi aham. Samoham sarvabhute shu na me dvesho sti na priya na bhajanti tu mam bhaktya mayi te te shu Chapiyaham. I am equal to all, so no one is my enemy or my friend. Yet for those who serve me with love, as they are bound by affection for me, I am similarly bound by the tie of affection for them. I am equal to all, so no one is my enemy or my friend. Yet for those who serve me with love, as they are as they are bound by affection for me, I am similarly bound by the tie of affection for them. So, Krishna's position is naturally, he is, he's, he's equanimous. He's not, he's not an enemy of anyone, nor does he favor someone as such, but he is, he has a very uh, sweet heart and his relationship with the devotees as they are serving him and loving him with so much affection, he naturally responds to them. It's natural. This is a natural relationship with a person. He is, he is, it's, you can understand that the Lord's position is that actually he's, he's related with everyone. And we heard from Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj said he rejected the philosophy of politics, which is based on friends and enemies. And he said, I do not see people as, as my friend or enemy. I'm not, I'm not naturally biased in that way. And similarly, the Lord, he is... He is equal. He is, he relates with everyone, and he's not, and he's not seeing somebody as as his enemy or as his friend. Sometimes in his pastimes, he will show that his maybe a devote, maybe a, one of his eternal devotees will relate with him in his pastimes as a demon, have uh, special 
some special uh, exchange of, for instance, uh, of emotion where they're fighting and, and like this. But the, the position of the Lord is he responds very, very warmly to his devotees because they're, you can understand, for instance, if a, a woman has children and all the children are, are grown, and then maybe she'll, she'll uh, look after them to a certain extent. But for the youngest children who are completely dependent on, on her, then she maintains them, she takes them in her arms, and she takes care of them. So, so that is a natural flow of affection. And really everything is going on by affection. That is the whole, that is the whole way in which devotion is going, especially when we come to that plane of devotion, which is known as Rag Marg, which is a spontaneous flow from the heart, then the Lord is, is very much, he's bound, he's captured by that mood of, loving mood of his devotees. So this is the way the Lord explains it. I am equal to all, so no one is my enemy or my friend. Yet for those who serve me with love, as they are bound by affection for me, I am similarly bound by the tie of affection for them. Chipram bhavati dharmatma shatsvats chant. No, excuse me. Apichet sudara charo bhajat bhajate mam ananyabak sadur eva samantavya samyak vyavasito isaha apichet sudara charo bhajate mam ananyabak sadur eva samantavya Samyak Vyavasito Isa. If even a very sinful person serves me exclusively with devotion, he should re be regarded as saintly, for his resolve is perfect. If even a very sinful person serves me exclusively with devotion, he should be regarded as saintly, for his resolve is perfect. Now, when we use the term, when the term is used here, very sinful person, that may be according to the norms of society because they cannot really understand what is, what is the heart of a, of a saint. They cannot understand that. And we heard an example given that d during the time of the struggle for independence in India, the government regarded the Gaudiya Mat as teaching slave mentality. In other words, the idea, Jivar Swarupoy Krishna Nityadas, that we're your eternal servants of the Lord. So a slave mentality. And they were considering that that was detrimental to the society because they wanted persons to stand up and fight against, for the fight for the independence of India. So they regarded that these persons were doing something wrong because they were teaching something that didn't, ad didn't adhere to what they considered to be the norms of the society. Just like we've seen in different countries. I, uh, I w remember some countries, they were very disturbed by certain persons of uh, a different religion who went stand and salute the flag. They considered that that was very wrong. And there, so if even a very sinful person serves me exclusively with devotion, he should be regarded as saintly for his resolve is perfect. So again, what is a very sinful person? That is a judgmental term. And it may be judge, it may not be that the person is, is sinful, but may be sinful in the eyes of some who don't understand that person's higher resolve. So then, then follows Chipram Bhavati Dharmatma Shatsvats Chantim Nigachanti Konteya Prati Chanihi Name Bhakta Pranashati Chipram Bhavati Dharmatma Shatsvats Chantim Nigachati Konteya Prati Chanihi 
na me bhakta pranashyati. He swiftly becomes a person of virtuous practices and attains constant peace. O son of Kunti, declare to the world that my devotee is never vanquished. So this is one interpretation of the verse. He swiftly becomes a person of virtual practices and attains constant peace. O son of Kunti, declare to the world that my devotee is never vanquished. Now we should be very suspect of this this apparent translation, because we have already heard uh, that the person being spoken of is an Ananya Buck. He's an uh, he's a Ananya Buck means someone who is completely uh, serving the Lord with the ex exclusive devotion, giving up all other endeavors such as karma and gyan, as, as it's mentioned here. But he's serving the Lord with ex exclusive devotion. So he swiftly becomes, so then, if he's already serving the per Lord with, with, uh, with exclusive devotion, how will he become, quote, religious according to the, 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 the superficial norms of society? But here, this, this is one translation, but it's really not the translation that we're interested in or after. He swiftly becomes a person of virtuous practices and attains constant peace. O son of Kunti, declare to the world that my devotee is never vanquished. Now, rather, this other translation is, will be more to our understanding. O son of Kunti, declare to the world that my devotee is never vanquished. One who declares this swiftly becomes virtuous and attains eternal joy. O son of Kunti, declare to the world that my devotee is never vanquished. One who declares, declares this swiftly becomes virtuous and attains eternal joy. So if you understand that the Ananya Bhak devotee, the pure, pure exclusive worship devotee, is always in a, in a divine position, and you declare that, you will become virtuous and you will attain eternal joy. This is rather the uh, an understanding that Srila Bhakti Rakak Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj has given us. Commentary. The second interpretation of this verse was revealed to Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur in a dream. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Sri Krishna says, Agyayayvam gunan doshan maya dishtan apisvakan dharman samjaja yasarvan mambajet sacha sattama. The best of the saintly persons are those who have surpassed the forms of duties that I myself have recommended in the scriptures for the people in general. Although it is my directive, they cross it and render loving service to me. In society, one must obey the law, but there is also the situation of crossing the law to show fidelity to the king. If one risks his life and reputation in crossing the general law, enters the royal chamber, chamber to combat an assassin, then he will be considered the most loyal servitor. Similarly, the Lord is saying, I have already given some direction for the people in general. Do this, don't do that, don't cross this, these laws, etc. But if for my interest anyone takes the risk of committing sin, then he should be considered the best of my devotees. So Arjuna, go and declare it. Promise to the public that the Ananya Bhak, the exclusively devoted persons, will never come to ruin. Then you will get the benefit. You will become Dharmatma religious and eterned, eternal and attain eternal divine happiness. The Ananya Bhak, the exclusive devotees, have already crossed the threshold of Dharma, the standard of du du dutifulness, and taken the risk to throw themselves fully into my service. Sarva Dharma Paritya Mami Kam Sharanam Vraja. There is no question of them becoming virtuous or religious as they long before surpassed dharma and took the risk and entered into prema dharma. 
my loving service, transcending both piety and sinfulness. And this will give us something of an understanding of what, how we are to see and worship those persons who are actually on the path of spontaneous devotional service. The, the Rag Marg devotees, we are, to, we are to worship those devotees. We are not to think erroneously that we have attained that kind of an elevated platform. Rather, it is worshipable by us. And we will make no mistake in seeing that the advanced devotees should not be judged according to the norms of a society. Uh, rather, we should understand that their heart is completely devoted to the Lord and always within the, their heart, they're worshiping the Lord. Therefore, one should not consider that they're answerable to some external norms that are placed upon persons in society. Although they may perfectly show what is the behavior and what are the activities of a devotee, they will show us by their example that they're rising in the morning, that they're attending the attending the Mangalarti, if they, if, they so, if they so do it or so wish, then they, they may show us so many good examples, but we should understand that sometimes who is actually an Uttama Adhikari will descend down to the Madhyam Adhikari plane in order to teach others. But that person is on a plane where he's not seeing Someone is, as mentioned before, not seeing someone as a friend, not seeing someone as a devotee, but seeing rather everyone is engaged in the service of the Lord. Even those persons who are considered inimical or even the demons, they have some, they have some role to play in the service of the Lord. And an Uttama Adhikari sees in that way. Well, we cannot imitate that if we are not on that plane. We will we will make so many errors of trying to assume ourselves to be better than we are or showing ourselves to be prakriti sahajyas or something, someone who's taking the false mantle of an advanced devotee. We don't want to do that. Rather, we are worshiping that divine plane, and it is very worshipable by us. And here we see the idea of crossing over the norms of the society. We see that in the, in the most elevated devotees, for instance, Srimati Radharani, the gopis of Vrindavan, they are leaving be behind their, their husbands. They're leaving behind their family. They're running out into the, into the, into the darkness of night. Sometimes they have, sometimes they are properly, not, Properly or not properly dressed, that is not the consideration. They are going, they are attracted by Krishna's flute and they're running to him. But therefore, Krishna praises them that they have crossed over the norms of society. And we, we may see like that in a, in, a, in a special consideration here. We have this example that normally one is not permitted into the inner sanctum of, of the royal family, etc. But in this case, which we heard, the, a person is daring to, uh, is daring, is risk, taking risk, going into that inner sanctum because that, he is trying to stop an assassin. And in so doing, he, he goes, he acts rather selflessly. He may... He may be misunderstood, he may even be attacked, but his mission is to stop the threat to the king. So in this way, the advanced devotees, they're, they're crossing over the norms of the society sometimes. And no one can understand the actual heart of a pure devotee. It would be very presumptuous to think that somebody can understand what is a uh, pure devotee's heart. I remember one time sh someone asked to Srila Sridhar Maharaj, they said, when we are chanting the, the songs, the, the high, the bhajans of the elevated devotees, like 
Naratam Das Thakur and Bhakti Vinod Thakur and others, that devote, person asked, is it understood that we are entering onto, into the plane of their emotions, that, that they have written these songs, and we are entering into that plane of their emotions? And Srila Sridhar Marsh answered with the words, puppy brain. That how, you can, how can you presume that you can, you can understand the sentiments of, of an exclusive devotee? Mam i part of yapasritya, ye pishu papayonaya, striyo vaishas tatashudras, te piyanti paramgatim. O son of Prita, persons of low birth, women, merchants, or laborers, they too attain the supreme destination by taking full refuge in me. O son of Prita, uh, Prita Persons of low birth, women, merchants, or laborers, they too attain the supreme destination by taking full refuge in me. And you may, someone may say, well, this seems rather discriminatory against, uh, against persons like women and laborers and merchants, that persons of low birth. No, we will say we are of low birth. We're not even within the Vedic society. We're born in a society which is adverse to the principles of, of God consciousness. That, that we're, we're seeing so many activities going on in this society that don't even bring one up to the level of humanity. But here it is being said that, that even persons even women, even merchants, even laborers, or even those like us, which you could use the word yavanas, malechas, persons outside of the norms of, of a civilized society, uh, even such persons can attain the supreme destination by taking full refuge in the Lord. So, and Krishna is giving us this assurance Rather, and it will be natural. The natural heart of, his, of a devotee is to think that they are very low and fallen. We see that in the writings of, uh, for instance, of Krishnadas Kaviraj, in the most elevated literature, the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami says, I am, I am lower than the worm in stool. If anyone even takes my name, they will lose all their piety. But that is not such. That is not simply some literary convention. That is actually the natural sentiments of the of the heart of a devotee. So this may not be understood, especially everyone is so conscious of, of not to of being politically correct. But but the consideration here is not a political correct, correctness. Krishna is saying everyone can attain the level, the level of pure devotion and attain the supreme destination if they will take refuge in him. And it's rather a very open assurance that doesn't exclude anyone. Kim punar brahmana punya bhakta rajarshaya stata anityam asukam lokam imam prapya bhajasvamam kim punar Brahmana punya bhakta rajarshaya stata anityam asukam lokam imam prapya bhajasvamam. So can there be any doubt that those brahmanas and saintly kings who are pure devotees will achieve the supreme goal? Therefore, worship me, since although this human body is temporary and a place of suffering, it is attained only after many births, and it affords the best opportunity to render devotional service to me. So this is also, you, you, you see the circumstance with Arjuna is in, and he's going to fight in this battle, and Krishna is telling him, Kim punar brahmana punya bhakta rajarshaya stata anitya masukam lokam imam prapya bhajasvamam. He's already assured that anyone, whether they're 
woman or sudra, laborer or, or, or vaisha, merchant, or even outside the, the norms of a civilized society, anyone who takes refuge in the Lord will attain, can attain the supreme destination. And here Krishna says to Arjuna, so, so can there be any doubt that those Brahmins and saintly kings who are pure devotees will achieve the supreme goal? You need not worry about those persons. They're, you know, they're engaged in the divine play of the sweet absolute, and Krishna will afford them all protection and all benefit. Therefore, and then he tells Arjuna, therefore worship me, since although this human body is temporary and a place of suffering, it is attained only after many births, and it affords the best opportunity to render devotional service. So many times we will hear this. Don't neglect this opportunity given to you that you've taken a human birth, and don't, don't, don't waste it just in idle pleasures and, and, and temporary pursuits when you should understand that how, how good an opportunity this is to attain some level of devotion and, and, and enter into a relationship with Krishna. Nothing could be more valuable than that. Manmana bhava mad bhakto madhyaji mam namaskaru mam evaishyasi yuktvaivam atmana mat parayana Manmana bhava mad bhakto madhyaji mam namaskaru mam evaishyasi yuktvaivam atmana mat parayana Always think of me. Be my devotee, always worship me, and offer obeisances to me. Thus, offering yourself to me and taking refuge in me, you will come to me. Always think of me, be my devotee, always worship me, and offer obeisances to me. Thus, offering yourself to me and taking refuge in me, you will come to me. And Srila Sridhar Maharaj says, this, this verse is virtually repeated twice in the Slight variation, but it's repeated twice in this Bhagavad Gita. The, to worship me, to become my, think of me, become my devotee, worship me, offer obeisances to me. The Lord, Srila Srinamar has explained that Krishna is very, uh, you could almost say very openly, almost shamefully, pleading that you become his devotee, that you worship him, that you bow down to him, offering obeisances, and that you think of him always. This seems like, it seems very audacious that the Lord would so openly plead that you worship him, become his devotee. There, where, where is the sense of humility? But rather, this is something that's done out of the deepest sense of affection, for our benefit, the Lord is, is asking and, and, and advising us so, with so much love and affection for our benefit. And you won't see this kind of, you won't see this kind of request in any other scripture where it is done with this level of affection and, and, and almost in a mood of supplication that the Lord is asking that you become his devotee. It is very touching, very heart, it, it, it touches one's heart. This is actually, this is the warmth of, of Krishna consciousness, that the Lord is asking for our own benefit. For his own, for his benefit, he doesn't, he, he, as he says, offer me a leaf, offer me a flower, offer me some water, uh, or a leaf, or some fruit, he says, you can offer these things. And he says, even the most, you know, the most, you could say, easily attainable thing. You can, anyone can, can attain water virtually. Anyone can attain some, a leaf or a flower, or a fruit, and offer to the Lord. But he asks that you, he says he will accept these things if they're done with love and devotion. If they're offered with love and devotion, that will be the ingredient. And we can see it is a natural sentiment of a person. If somebody, 
Uh, somebody, uh, for instance, the it, it was something that is very, just very ordinary as offered to someone with love and devotion. The person will accept that, oh, this is very dear to me. Why is it dear to that person? Because it was offered to someone that that person loves. You know, if someone, if somebody, if somebody who you love brings you, you know, uh, flowers or water or even gives you a glass of water, you'll be, you'll be, you'll appreciate it. And it will be, it will be of so much importance to you. Because the ingredient that which you're really relishing is the affection in which it's offered. So this is, here Krishna says this to his, his devotees. He says it to everyone actually, but he asks you to take, this, to take this to heart. Always think of me, be my devotee, always worship me and I'll offer obeisances to me. Thus offering yourself to me and taking refuge in me, you will come to me. Okay. Iti Shri Mahabharate Shata Sahasriyam Samhitayam Bayasikyam Bhishma Parvane Srimad Bhagavad Gita Supanishatsu Brahma Vidyayam Yoga Shastre Shri Krishna Arjuna Samvade Rajaguya Yoga Nama Navamo Jaya End of chapter 9, The Hidden Treasure of Devotion from the Conversation of Sri Krishna and Arjuna and Srimad Bhagavad Gita Upanishad, the Yoga Scripture of Transcendental Knowledge in Bhishma Parva of Sri Mahabharata, the Holy Scripture revealed by Srila Vyasadeva in a hundred thousand verses. Now I will sing Hari Harai. Hari Harai Nama Krishna Janabaya Nama Janabaya Madhavaya Keshavaya Nama Gopa Govinda Ram Shri Madhusudan Giridari Gopinatha Mamana Mohan Sri Chaitanya Nityananda Sri Advaita Chandra Karanara Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jai Rupa Sanatam Bhakta Raghunath Sri Jiva Gopala Bhakta Dasa Raghunath Sri Chai Gosai Kori Charana Bandhan Jai Te Vignana Shabhishta Puran Echai Gosai Jar Mui Taradhan Tasamar Bada Renu Mora Panchagan Ha 
शरण से भी बात सनिमान जना में मोरे आभिलास चाय गो साहे जाबे बाजे कोलबास राधाकृष्ण नित्य लीला कोरी ला प्रकाश आनंदे बोलो हरि बाजा बिंदबान श्री गुरु वैष्णव पदे मंजाई अमान गुरु वैष्णव पाद पदमा कोरिया अरे नाम संगीर्थान को है नाराम श्री गुरु वैष्णव पाद पदमा कोरिया हरि नाम संगीर्तान को हे नर हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे गीत गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो हा हरि बो परिकर श्री श्री गुरु गुरु गंधार्विक गिरिडार जीव की जाय तदीय जाय ओम विष्णुपाद परमस पार्वचाकचार्यष्ट तारसद श्री श्रीमान शील भक्ति सुंदर गोविंद देव गोस्वाई महाराज की जाय जाय ओम विष्णुपाद परमस पार्वचाकचार्य अष्ट तारसद श्री श्रीमान शील भक्ति वृक्षीर देव गोस्वाई महाराज की जाय जय भगवान शिल भक्ति सुदंत सरस्वती गोसाई ठाकुर की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद श्रील गोर किशोर दस बाबा जी महाराज की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद श्रील सात श्री नंद भक्ति बनाओ ठाकुर की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद वैष्णव सार बाबा ओम श्रील जगन्नाथ दास बाबा जी महाराज की जय रुबनु गुर वर्ग की जय नामचार्य श्रील हरिदास ठाकुर की जय श्री रूप सनातन बात रघुनाथ श्री जीव गो पाओ बदस रघुनाथ सद गो स्वामी प्रभु की जय प्रेम सि गो श्री कृष्ण चैतान्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदान हर्षिवासदी श्री गौरभक्त वृंद की जय 
Jai Om Vishnupad Vishpavarena Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnupad Srila Bhakti Nirmalacharya Maharaj Ki Jai. Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Madhacharya Vrinda Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai. Sri Nabadeep Dham Ki Jai. Sri Ramayapur Ki Jai. Saparshada Sri Nityananda Prabhu Ki Jai. Saparshada Sri Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. Sri Kaladvip Ki Jai. Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Ki Jai, Sokel Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Sevasham Ki Jai, Ganga Devi Ki Jai, Tulasi Manarani Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Go Gopi Govardhan, Shamkana Radha Kunda Kalindi Amunaju Ki Jai, Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Shri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, all the assembled devotees Ki Jai. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo. Jai Om Vishnu Pachi Lavakti Pavan Janardhan Maharaj Ki. Jai.